My wife died in a crash, but while grieving I uncovered her affair and plans to take everything. She would let me read it. I decided to honor her by getting the draft of her book and hiring a writer to clean it up and publish it with a novelty press. I got on her laptop, and, no book, no sign at all. I opened her Chrome, thinking she might have written it in Google Drive and saw a bunch of pinned tab. One was a Facebook Messenger tab with a ton of her messages with a man, John. I have no idea who John is, never met him, but they talked about meeting up, exchanged photos, everything. The last message John sent her was two days before Cynthia's accident, the two saying they loved each other and him saying he was going on a business trip to Germany. The messages between Cynthia and John has shown they had met up at the house more than once, so I already had the locks changed, not sure if John is back yet, and frankly don't care if he is. I was thoroughly devastated. She did have a Google Drive tab, but in her drive wasn't a book about elves v's Vulcans, but a shared document with John. The document was a plan her and John drafted on how to divorce me, turn the kids against me, and take our home and as much money as possible. One thing she noted was she has been taking money, a few hundred a month, and putting it in a separate account. I got the bank thing sorted out and the money in the kid's college account. I've also been going to therapy twice a week now. It is hard to be mad at someone dead, especially someone everyone else in your life is grieving and praising as a wonderful wife and mother. I have asked my therapist if I should tell my kids about what Cynthia has done and what she was planning to do. My therapist cautioned me about this. He said that they just lost their mother and being told this would be condemning her memory. Dom Nacio Memoria. Maybe now is not the time, but I think eventually would be a time for my kids to know. Update 1. Some things have happened since last time. To answer some questions I've gone to the bank and got control of Cynthia's account and transferred the money into a savings account for the kids. Also my kids already suspect it. Tuesday night my eldest Michelle said her and my son Jason had something to say to me. And they sat me down in the living room and Michelle said we think mom was cheating on you. But they both said they weren't sure but it was eating them up seeing me in extreme grief the past month and they thought I should hear what they suspect. They brought up how Cynthia was always away and when she was at home she would say strange observations about me. Stuff like isn't it weird your dad's working late this week. This is one of those seeds Cynthia mentioned in her document that she wanted to plan in the kids. Now Michelle said her suspicions went high the week before the accident, when she got home from school and saw a strange jacket on the coat hook by the front door. It wasn't any jacket Jason or I had, so she was very suspicious about it. I told both my kids that I didn't tell them, but I found evidence on their mom's computer. When I was looking for the book she said she was writing. Now Michelle wanted to see the evidence, but Jason said he doesn't want to think or talk about mom for a while. He shared the info with Michelle after she insisted she already suspected her mom and was ready for it. It feels good to now have someone close that can talk to me about this beyond my therapist. Yesterday afternoon I was home alone when I heard someone jiggling the back door's knob. I went to the door and saw a man I never saw before trying to use a key on the lock. I told him to step back from the door and he almost jumped. I opened the door a crack and asked him who he was and what he was doing in my backyard. It was John, Cynthia's affair partner. He told me that he worked with my wife and he just got back from a trip and saw Cynthia died on social media and him and Cynthia were starting a business. They had a business bank account with his investment money in the business and he was wondering if I could help him get the business funds transferred over. I looked him straight in the eye and said I was at the bank and Cynthia didn't have an extra business account and I had no idea what he was talking about. John also said that he wanted to check my wife's things for any sensitive business documents. I said he was a stranger and wasn't welcome in my home especially since he tried to enter without permission. John looked defeated but did suggest he would consult with a lawyer about his sensitive business documents and business funds. I am refusing to sleep in the servants' quarters of my fiancé's mansion. He wants to end things. I, 22F, am a working-class woman who was raised by a single mother in a council flat. Throughout my life I was surrounded by people from a similar background, so I never felt self-conscious about money until I started dating my fiancé, 27M, who comes from a very upper-class family. He is a very kind man who has done his best to make sure his parents aren't judgmental about my background but I can't help but feel like I'm not a part of the family. My in-laws have been courteous with me, but in a backhanded manner, constantly telling me that I'd done well for myself despite my upbringing. I have a younger sister, 9F, who has been in my care since our mother overdosed. My fiancé gets along well with her and is happy to help me take care of and raise her. His parents, 54F, 60M, own a very large estate in the countryside where they spend their summers. It's a gorgeous 18th century home that looks like it belongs in a fairy tale. I had stayed over a few times, sleeping in my fiancé's room, but my sister had never been since she wasn't permanently living with me back then. My fiancé and I will both be staying there this summer, but we haven't yet made an arrangement for where my sister will sleep. The estate has four spare bedrooms that once belonged to my fiancé's deceased older siblings who'd passed away over a decade ago. I tried to discuss this with my in-laws, asking them if my sister could stay in one of their bedrooms when she came over this summer, but they abhorred my request, claiming they didn't want to ruin the sentimental memories associated with their dead children. I asked them if there was anywhere else my sister could stay, and they said the only spare bedroom they had was in the basement, which had once been the servants' quarters. It had been renovated and modernized, but it was distinctly different from the rest of the house it was very bare and plainly decorated, while the upstairs part of the house looked like a set from a period drama. I tried to explain that my sister is going through a hard time as it was. The least they could do was not make her feel excluded by her own family. 
They said that it was their mansion, their rules, and if I didn't want my sister to feel excluded then I might as well go stay in the servants' quarters with her. I tried telling them that the estate had been in their family for so long that every room once belonged to a dead person and it was useless to try and banish people from using half the house. So our discussion quickly turned into an argument, where they said I should be grateful they're allowing my sister to stay at all, and I ended up calling them stuck up and privileged. Ida, I divorced my wife because she lied about her fertility. I'm livid. I 38M have been with my wife Natalie 37F for 8 years. Married for 4 years. Natalie has a daughter from a previous relationship, Kaya, 12F. Kaya's dad left when she was a newborn. We have no idea where he is. I love her as if she were mine. She calls me dad and has a great relationship with me. I told Natalie from the very beginning that I would like to have biological children, and she said she is open to having more kids. After we got married, we bought a nice place and started trying for a baby. After a year, we did some testing and all came back normal. My wife said IVF would be too costly and hard on her body. I was secretly devastated. But I decided to come to terms with the fact that I'll never have any biological kids. This was until a few days ago when I found out from Natalie's sister that Natalie lied to me. She and her sister got into a fight in our house, and her sister screamed, at least I don't take pills behind my husband's back, and claim I'm infertile. Does he know you had an abortion? I was floored. My wife kicked her sister out and started crying, saying she really didn't want another kid and didn't want to lose me. I can't believe she lied to me instead of talking to me. I just left. I've been staying at my parents' house since then. And Natalie begs me to come back, and she says we can try for a baby. Kaya even messaged me to come back. Do my parents think I should just move on and give her another chance? She made a mistake, and she apologized. Ida for wanting a divorce for this lie? Edit, I live in Canada, I'm pro-choice. I do believe women have to control their bodies. Don't lecture me about her rights. So, but this is a different case. She lied to me. I could have now have my baby in my arms. I had no idea she is against having more babies until a few days ago. Abortion happened 1.5 years after our wedding. But yes, it was my baby. Yes, she saw me devastated and upset when she claimed we can't have a baby. I can't believe she lied in my face. Update. Thank you for all your kind comments and private messages. I did receive a few unkind ones accusing me of trying to control her body or making her feel unsafe, which is why she secretly went through with it. Natalie came over to my parents' house last night after dinner. She dropped off Kaya at her friends because she said she needed to talk to me. I'm glad I gave her the chance because I now have no doubt she is a pathological liar. She said after her first pregnancy she had to work so hard to be in shape, and she swore she would never do that again. So I said, then you lied to me from day one. She said she thought she would change her mind, but she didn't. But then she saw me come to terms with not having a baby, so she decided not to tell me. I said, so you lied more? You got rid of my baby because you wanted to stay fit, but you didn't even discuss anything with me. How could you do that to me? I could be holding my baby right now and you stole that from me. She said she is sorry, but the good news is she still can. I said, you are still lying. You still don't want a baby and you're only saying it so I stay. I don't even know what to believe anymore. I can't trust you, ever. She started crying, saying Kaya is so sad you left us because I can't give you a baby. I lost it. You lied to her too. Is this why she thinks I left? I told her it's over and get out of my parents' house. She cried and cried. I'll meet with a lawyer this week to start the separation process. I'll send a text to Kaya and explain that I didn't abandon her and will do anything to be in her life. I never legally adopted her, sadly. I can't believe I blindly trusted her all these years. As for Kaya's dad, I have no idea who he is. She refuses to talk about it.